Hello, it's a Wednesday night and here is Fatty to do what we do here at this time. That is bringing you the news of happenings in the country and beyond with that extra extra touch. Tonight, it's another harvest of interesting stories bringing from the seat of government in the country where the president has been most busy. You know the race to achieve a January to December budget cycle is on and today the National Assembly did little less than dwell on the budget. We'll tell you all about that and subsectorial analysis of the president's presentation. And the vice president is in Oslo, Norway, promoting Algeria's potentials and drawing investors. We have that too. You know that is not all as we bring you stories from the business world, security, judiciary, sport, and much more. Let me not heighten up the sense it's too much. I mean your sense too much. Let me just bring you the news as the taste of the pudding is in the eating. I am Fatima Umar Buba and this is News Extra. And we begin with the presidency. The newly constituted Presidential Economic Advisory Council has been inaugurated with a mandate to coordinate and synthesize ideas and efforts towards giving more impetus to the nation's economic growth plans for sustainable future of the country. President Muhammad Buhari, who performed the ceremony, particularly charged the members to develop a reliable data for homegrown solutions to the nation's socio-economic challenges. State House correspondent Adam Musambu has the report. Today, most of the statistics quoted about Nigeria are developed abroad and bear little relation to the facts on the ground. Such statistics by the World Bank, IMF, and other foreign bodies described as wild estimates, President Buhari said, cannot work for Nigeria. The president maintains that it is high time the country moved forward with homegrown solutions. I therefore look forward to receiving your base land study, as this will help us shape ideas for a sustainable and prosperous future. I rest assured that all key MDAs will be available to meet and discuss how we can collectively build a new Nigeria that caters for all. Now, no one person or a group of persons has a monopoly of knowledge or wisdom or patriotism. In the circumstances, you may feel free to co-opt, consult, and defer for any knowledgeable person if, in your opinion, such a move enriches your deliberations and adds to the quality of your decisions. The president said, although Nigeria has exited recession, the reported growth rate is still not fast enough to create the needed jobs to meet national ambition of collective prosperity. While thanking members of the Economic Advisory Council for their patriotism and commitment to Nigeria, President Buhari reminds them of his administration's commitment to lifting 100 million people out of poverty in 10 years. The council, he said, is required to come out with far-reaching measures towards achieving the objectives, as well as moving the country and the economy forward. Many of the ideas we developed in the last four years were targeted at taking Nigeria back to the path of growth. I am sure, as you are aware, as a government, we prioritize agriculture as a critical sector to create jobs and bring prosperity to our rural communities. Our programs covered the entire agricultural value chain from seed to fertilizer to grains and ultimately our dishes. You can clearly see the impact. However, the absence of reliable data is hindering our ability to upgrade these programs and assure their sustainability. The federal government, he admits, is also struggling to measure the impact of its social investment programs. Today, we hear international organizations claiming to spend hundreds of millions of dollars on ID fees in the Northeast. But when we visit the camps, 
you really see the impact. Last week, I directed the new Minister for Humanitarian Affairs to commence a comprehensive data gathering exercise in our IDP camps in the Northeast. Actionable data, President Buhari said, is critical towards implementing effective strategies in addressing the nation's humanitarian issues and other pressing problems. Chairman of the Council, Professor Doin Salami, assured President Buhari that their mandate is all about Nigeria and Nigerians not as numbers but as people. He pledged members' commitment towards ensuring that the economy grows in a manner that is rapid, inclusive, sustained and sustainable so that Nigerians will feel the impact. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. In the meantime, President Muhammad Buhari is reassuring Nigerians that everyone will be carried along in the last step of his presidency, which he promised will be more functional and responsive to genuine national aspirations. This was while granting audience to some of the ministers who served under military rule in the mid-80s. Again, Adamu Sambu has the details. <laughs> it was an emotional sight to behold and indeed refreshing as President Muhammad Buhari went down memory lane, reminiscing shared experiences with the then ministers of his government as military head of state between 1984 and 1985. It was a generation ago, the one who was uh, responsible for the decision of running the country. You knew how we work to get things done. We have seen a lot. Uh, we are seeing more. President Buhari, who thanked the former ministers for being consistently in touch, used the opportunity to appreciate the military for its decision to not only relocate the nation's capital to Abuja, but also ensure its development. It's good for the country because we have used all the national resources to accommodate people like It wouldn't have been enough. Leader of delegation and former Minister of External Affairs, Professor Ibrahim Gambari, congratulated the President on his achievements in the areas of security, foreign affairs, anti-corruption, education, and many others. On the issue of the fight against corruption, I want to congratulate you, sir, for your leadership, which is recognized not only in Nigeria, but in Africa and also in the international community. We also believe, however, that the war against corruption cannot be lost. There's no alternative to victory. We believe there has to be synergy between the executive and the judiciary. It's, it's a fight that has to be won at all levels. The former ministers, he said, will never forget the opportunity given to them to serve the country then under his leadership, which was firm, responsive, and responsible, assuring him that they will all remain patriots. They also commended the president on the newly constituted Economic Advisory Council, saying, however, that the same be considered for security and foreign affairs. Because we believe strongly that there's no monopoly of wisdom anywhere. And the more people are involved in supporting you, sir, identifying options out of which your excellencies will decide, the better. And then they become also food soldiers to your success. Is the success of all Nigerians, but it's even a success for us because we are privileged to have associated with your success in 1984 and 85. A minute's silence was observed in the memory of those who have passed on amongst the former ministers. From the State House, Adam Musambu, News. And in another development, her participants at the 9th Nordic Africa Business Summit in Oslo, Norway, have described the economic recovery and growth plan of the federal government as a step in the right direction. State House correspondent Dio Onifadi of the team of Vice President Mio Shimbajo at the summit reports that the participants, most of them investors, have promised make use of the opportunities provided by the Nigerian government. Jide, it's over to you. At both the plenary and the round table sessions, the state was set for the vice president to explain to the participants some of the things being done by the federal government to boost the economy of the country, answering questions ranging from the business environment, renewable energy, oil and gas, even to education. 
as well as finding space for the youth to display their potential. These are all areas where government is paying great attention in addition to dealing with the issue of corruption. So uh, just uh, by landing in Lagos, going through the migration, you know, the queuing system has improved, the you know, the, the immigration visa system has improved. The payments for visas have improved. You can get visas on arrival these days, etc. So that is exactly what we see as well in the wider context of doing business in Nigeria, where uh, when you look at imports, exporting money flows in and out of the country, that over the past years, uh, four years especially, we have seen a dramatic improvement in the ease of doing business uh, very positively. Nigeria is a huge economy, uh, it's an important country, so the more educated we can be in what are the issues and the opportunities, the better we can work together with the, the country to, to, to move forward. Another opportunity again for Nigeria, vice president to vice president, president to president, it makes it very easy that uh, the two giants of Africa are now meeting at different levels in even at different con uh, uh, continents. He's articulated all the right, um, the right issues to create an environment that is enabling for businesses to thrive. I think he has said the very right things and he has done a very good job in projecting the image of Nigeria. From the, uh, the, the feedback that we've been getting, you know, this has been uh, a, a most useful uh, forum you know, uh, for, 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 for Nigeria to interact with, uh, with investors and business people uh, from Norway and other Nordic, uh, Nordic countries. In Norway is a very rich country with large population of investors who are now interested in expanding their coast and Africa is on their radar. Nigeria. The business environment is quite ripe. First of all, you know very well that we now have a bit of macroeconomic stability. Inflation has come down, the exchange rate has stabilized. And so all the concerns about the macro environment have, have been addressed from the investor perspective. In addition to that, of course, are the major investments that government have been making in the infrastructure. It, it, it is not only the space for the youth, but for investors from all around the world. Come over to Nigeria and invest. From Oslo in Norway, Jide Onifade, NT News. Sure, Jide, they should come to Nigeria and invest. Now, budget performance is significantly dependent on the, str the strength of its revenue generation. Therefore, to ensure an impressive performance of the 2020 budget, the Senate has conversed stringent revenue generation system in the 2020 fiscal year. These senators who commenced the consideration of the 2020 appropriation bill also observed that the draft financial bill submitted by the president will improve the nation's revenue. National Assembly correspondent Ignatius Sungwa reports. Less than 24 hours of the receipt of the 2020 budget from the President, Senate has commenced the second round of the money bill. Leader of the Senate, Yahya Abdullahi, led the debate which lasted close to four hours. We have now really think out of the box from this chamber so that we can make the relevant laws that drive this economy in order for this economy to regenerate revenue. If we need to change, we must be able to look at the critical fundamentals of this uh, uh, budget speech and make adjustment as due. Most of the products that were exempted are the areas where our micro, small, and medium enterprises you are, you know, are engaged in. 2.64 for oil revenues and 1.81 for non-oil revenues and other revenues of uh, 3.9 trillion. Why is it the government has done well here is because there's an attempt to move away from dependence on oil revenue. We need to ensure that every government agency will now be part and parcel of IPs and also follow the TSA regime. The increment in the recurrent expenditure to accommodate the new minimum wage presidential decision to concentrate on the completion of ongoing projects and improved attention to human rights were described as remarkable. I agree with the Mr. President who said all the projects, all the ongoing projects will be completed. I want to commend uh, the Mr. President in the budget presentation for uh, providing for basic health care provision fund as a transfer.
They also suggested that the price of crude oil be raised from 57 to 60 dollars and inject the additional funds to some sectors like works, agriculture, and Northeast Development Commission. Well, presently, the oil price is over 70 dollars and it's likely to increase because of the high tension in the Middle East to establish and to finish Mambila plant on our electricity. And we are able to generate what is needed for this country. We will take the country to where we ought to be. So we have tomorrow to continue with the debate on Tuesday uh, next week. The Senate has confirmed the appointment of Adeleke Adewolu as executive commissioner on the governing board of the Nigerian Communications Commission. Meanwhile, Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Senator Adeda Yoadeye, briefed Senate correspondents on the budget, during which he explained that the speed with which the Senate wants to consider the 2020 budget will not in any way impede on the normal budget scrutiny. A person could give himself one week to do it, and another person could give one month. If the person who has given himself one week applies himself diligently to it, spending more time on it, he will even do a better job than the person who has given himself uh, one month. In preparation for the commencement of the 2020 budget defense, the Senate Committee on Federal Road Maintenance Agency has met with the agency to ensure uninterrupted engagement from the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. And in keeping with its resolve of working with the executive to meet the yearnings of Nigerians, the House of Representatives commenced debate on the 2020 appropriation bill, laying the ground for legislative scrutiny in line with constitutional mandate. National Assembly correspondent Lami Ali reports that House members across party lines commended proposed spendings and revenue generation projections as contained in the document. When President Muhammad Buhari laid before a joint session of the National Assembly the 10.33 trillion naira budget proposal for 2020, both presiding officers of the Senate and House of Representatives pledged speedy consideration and passage, which explains the overwhelming response of House members at Tuesday's plenary when the bill came up for second reading. The lawmakers described the proposal as a reflection of the political will of the present administration to boost ongoing socio-economic development efforts with due consideration of current local and global realities. What will be done and it will cut across the whole six geopolitical zones of the Federation. This will enhance our security, it will enhance movement and enhance a better transportation system in the country, which I believe those of us that are from the rural areas and those of, those of us that are in the city as well will have a very better and very good Nigeria when such programs are in, in, in implemented. The philosophical cornerstone around which this budget revolves is investing in critical infrastructure, creating jobs and human capital development. Other measure put forward by Mr. President is a provision in the social investment program. This is a welcome development because while we are putting on the infrastructure, we need to do the stomach infrastructure. That is key. And it is only through the social investment program that this can be done for Nigerians. The growth in the GDP that Nigeria has recorded in the years 2017 2018 and the current year 2019. I want to say that it is gladdening when we read out statistics and the statistics point upward on any indices of development. Deliberation on the budget is billed to continue at Thursday's plenary. The South East Caucus tabled a motion calling for the speedy rehabilitation of Akanu Ibiam International Airport in Enugu and was adopted by House members. The closure of the airport has exposed the traveling public to avoidable inconveniences and 
frustrated their ease of doing business. Other motions on infrastructure development raised and adopted at Wednesday's plenary include investigation into abandoned Amadubello Way Road in Utupo, Benue State, reconstruction of Anambra Enugu River Bridge, and assistance to flood victims in parts of Yobe State. From the National Assembly, Lami Ali, NCA News. President Muhammad Buhari has promised to devote all his time and energy towards promoting national unity in the greater interest of the country and all Nigerians. The president said of those who are receiving a delegation of Benue State Council of Traditional Rulers, led by the Tortive, Professor James Ayase, State House Correspondent at Musombo Reports. The Benue monarchs were in the State House to felicitate with President Muhammad Buhari on his overwhelming re-election as well as the affirmation of his victory by the Elections Petitions Tribunal. Yours is a God-given victory and mandate to reconstruct, rebuild, and unite our country and take it to the next level of socioeconomic development. We are here to pledge our support and encouragement to your administration and its laudable programs. The Tortive appreciated President Buhari for, amongst others, tackling head-on the security challenges confronting Nigeria, approving various infrastructure projects that will positively affect the socio-economic life and well-being of Benue people, as well as appointing the state indigents into key government positions. Whatever politics does, politics will go away. The relationship between the Fulani and Thief, that is long standing and predates Nigeria, nothing can destroy it. And at a time when we have our brother, the Fulani man, on the tree, we should receive very bountiful fruits <laughs> coming down to us. <laughs> President Muhammad Buhari, who appreciated the visit, called for better understanding of the nation's diverse cultures in order to engender a healthier coexistence amongst the people while fortifying and strengthening the unity of the country. He stressed that the ties between the thief and his own ethnic Flanese talk must not only be made to endure but also serve as a strong unifying force in the country. As this is a uh, a visit I have valued very much. Thank you very much. Responding to the narration of the Tortive on the plight of the IDPs from the recent conflicts in the state, the president said his administration is not unmindful of the situation. That's why uh, we thought it uh, appropriate to have a minister for humanitarian affairs so that uh, demands can be coordinated under one ministry so that we don't duplicate uh, resources. President Buhari expressed delight with the Tortiv and the other monarchs for their leadership as well as strong support for his administration, promising to look at their long list of demands for necessary action. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. Many thanks, Adamu. Let's take a break now, but there will be more on the 2020 budget when we come back. Please stay with us. Hey! Emeka, <laughs> 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 drive the limousine Bugatti, come inside now! Waiting <laughs> 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 glow 200 naira recharge card for me. <laughs> Just recharge 200 naira for one day. And you say fit for a win for the hundreds and hundreds of heavy prices like a can of pepper. Industrial sewing machine, grinding machine and generator. Oh, my own dumb better. My grinder will go win. Now here I go. Make that. Make that. No gold recharge. Now go. I don't win the narrator. And here, now myself. Oh. The more you the recharge, the more your chance, the better. Unlimited. Indomitable game 
on Google Play Store. Search The Indomitables on Play Store and download now. Indomie Noodles. Tasty nutrition. Good for you. Wacky's Doll Land with Maggie Mega Millions promo. Every week, lucky winners go fit with 1 million naira each inside this promo, plus other correct instant prizes them. Oh yeah, carry 100 Maggie Star up at Go the Select Places and then go knock your scratch card where you go take win bracket the credits and cook cash instant. Me could bring plenty Maggie Star up out as that the person will bring Maggie Rapper plenty pass last last. Go win this 1 million naira. This now from the 1st of October. Go reach 31st of October 2019. Terms and conditions, they shall with Maggie. Cook the difference. Hey, bro, what's good? Uh, what's up, man? Mm, mm, wait, wait, wait. No, wait. I'm sure saying I won't device a guy. Enjoy more data than before on Airtel Home Broadband. Get up to 160 gigabytes on routers with 25,000 Naira and 55 gigabytes on Airtel MiFi's with 12,000 Naira. More data, more you. Reliable Home Broadband by Airtel, the smartphone network. Hey, you! And are you had to talk to? I sabi you now. It's in day your mind, Abi. The person with them go help us. Baba Torosa, Shangalo, Ogalekuva, Mr. Sabi. And you know if it carry last for this one. And spear into the top corner. We sabi say Peking will crawl before in Waka. So don't look, no help anybody. No dolly, no. So go for it. Go for football. Go for all Syria and La Liga matches live. Go for Go TV Max. Welcome to Adelike University, a faith-based learning institution located in the serene and historic town of Idi Oshun State, Nigeria, running on the well-thought vision of its founding fathers to improve lives and society. The institution offers affordable and quality education. We are currently offering admission into our faculties of science, engineering, law, and art. We are also offering entry into the Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences and the Faculty of Business and Social Science. Our College of Postgraduate Studies offers you the chance to earn your master's and doctorate's degree in over 30 disciplines. For more inquiries, please visit www.adilicauniversity.edu.ng. You can also call 0806 820-2021 Adilica University Education Excellence Character History was made in Africa with the birth of the first television station WNTV in Ibadan, Nigeria on October 31, 1959 I have great pleasure in formally launching Western Nigeria Television First in Africa Television in Africa clock 60 this year. It's time to celebrate this remarkable achievement. Various activities are lined up. Photo exhibition, a colloquium, public presentation of broadcasting books, and a gala night. Be part of these events powered by Foundation for Ibado Television Anniversary Celebrations, FITAC. Good to have you back on News Extra. Now, the power sector, as one of the biggest constituents of infrastructure development, is receiving the second highest allocation of 127 billion naira in the 2020 appropriation bill presented to the National Assembly. Among others is the commitment to modernize the national grid to enhance performance of transmission and distribution value chain with the ultimate result of promoting economic growth plan initiative and well-being of Nigerians. Hamza Musamagrafi reports. 
The ripple effect is to change small industries like these ones that rely on efficient energy supply to modernize operations. Habib Alugala Dima into publication and employer clearly understands keeping capacity utilization at its peak across Nigeria's economic corridor. Studies have shown nations that excel in all areas of need have a vibrant power sector, and that is the dream for Nigeria. One of the key capital spending allocations in the 2020 budget includes power 127 billion naira. So what it means is that there will be more impetus towards the completion of projects across dams and associated infrastructure designed to increase power generation in Nigeria. We will modernize the national grid in three phases, starting from 5 gigawatts to 7 gigawatts, then to 11 gigawatts by 2023. Very much needed. Why? Because, honestly, power Electricity is the key to industrialization. Nigeria will be on the path of a very rapid progress. Similarly, the budget looks forward to continuous positive engagement with industry experts, players and consumers whose ideas are indispensable to grow the sector. In the same vein, the Ministry of Power with complementary roles by agencies will be engaged on hybrid solar power projects as upgrade solution for rural communities to promote agro-production and processing as well as small-scale businesses. Well, it will no longer be business as usual because the changes coming to the power sector cannot happen without adequate funding and management as every penny collected by distribution company must count in order to achieve stability so that there will always be light at the end of the tunnel. Hamza Musama Kalifi, NTA News. You said it all, Hamza. And also, a 100 billion naira is allocated to the Ministry of Defense in the 2020 budget proposal presented to the National Assembly by President Muhammad Buhari. In this report, defense correspondent Ismail Musa attempts to examine the proposal in view of the margin threats across the country. A sum of 100 billion naira is allocated to the Ministry of Defense, comprising the Army, Navy, Air Force and other agencies under the ministry. That I lay before this distinguished. The three major services under the ministry are currently prosecuting different security threats in virtually all states of the federation. What is the implication of this proposal to the sector in view of the ongoing internal security operations? The figure of 100 billion naira appears to be smaller than the previous figure of 20. Um, 18, which was at over 500 uh, billion naira. Although it is a bit too early, uh, we are waiting for a breakdown of the budget from the Minister of Finance to understand the sectoral allocation to other MDAs and uh, government departments that are involved in security and then we'll have a final figure. It is at that point that we will now have a better understanding. After the budget presentation, federal ministries, departments and agencies are expected to defend their various proposals. In Abuja, Ismail Musa, NTA News. The Buhari media organization BMO says the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its allies analyzes analysis of the 2020 budget presented by President Muhammad Buhari to the National Assembly shows a lack of understanding of basic budgeting processes, noting that could be part of the reasons the PDP failed to make a real impact in spite of the billions of dollars that accrued to the country from oil receipts alone between 1999 and 2015. The BMO, in a statement by its chairman, Nia Kinsiju, points out that in an attempt to paint the Buhari administration as insensitive, the PDP claimed that Paltry budgets of 48 billion naira was allocated to education and 46 billion naira for health, which is not correct. Rather, the figures it quoted were for capital projects and were aside from the 12 billion naira allocated to the Universal Basic Education Commission, UBEC. 
so also is the statutory transfer or a first line charge allocation of a 44.5 billion naira to the basic healthcare provision fund on pdp's claim that the budget would further improvise uh, the populace the group insists that with the president's directive that all ongoing projects be completed the country will continue to look like a giant construction site with massive allocations to infrastructural development there would also be more money in circulation and a lot more direct and indirect jobs created BMO also dismisses the opposition's stance on allocation to the presidency as one base on or the assumption of what its members were used in the PDP years. And moving on, the federal government is similarly not proud of the number one world ranking in open defecation looming for Nigeria. The state governments too are joining the federal government to take the country out of the unfavorable list as the Jigawa state government joins the League of States declaring state of emergency on water and sanitation and hygiene. That was the top reaction as Water Resources Minister Suleiman Adamu held advocacy meetings with Northwest governors of Jigawa and Kano states. Musba Mohab reports. Clean Nigeria, use the toilet is the slogan adopted for the national campaign to end open defecation as the number one world ranking looms for the country. President Mohamed Buhari is scheduled to launch the national campaign, a component of a wash action plan earlier launched late last year. But to succeed in taking about 47 million people out of open defecation practice in Nigeria, it requires that state and local governments take ownership of the implementation. We were number six many years ago, but because of lack of effort, as other countries like Bangladesh, Pakistan, Indonesia, moved out and achieved 100% of open defecation and left us to the two to one of the Now we are taking a terrible, terrible batch of honor as the number one country in the world. Must do something about it. With over 86%, Jigawa State tops the northwest zone in access to safe water, and four of the 13 open defecation free LGAs in Nigeria are from Jigawa State. But with the other 23 LGAs in the state still in the practice, the state governor is taking a decisive step. I today declare state of emergency on water hygiene and sanitation and we will do our best to make sure that Jigawa is the first state to attain open education status in the country. In Kano State, about 500 water supply projects are being rehabilitated or constructed in partnership with the federal government but none of its 44 LGAs is completely free of open defecation jets with over 67% access to basic sanitation. Governor Umar Ganduje says the state is partnering private agencies in construction of toilets in public places and promises to appoint an advisor to fast track the implementation of WASH action plan in the state. In Abuja, Muspao, and Wahab, NT News. Strategic goals of the Federal Road Safety Corps to ensuring standard traffic rules in Nigeria are in line with resolutions of the International Convention on Road Safety Issues, which Nigeria is signatory to. This was part of a submission on the core mandate of the FRSC by the Corps Marshal Boboe Oyeyemi before the House Committee on Federal Road Safety Corps. National Assembly Correspondent Abdullah Yaminu reports. This is an interaction between the co marshal top management officers of the Corps and members of the committee. The idea is to ascertain the level of success as recorded in the road safety operations between 2018 and 2019 and constraints upon which 
prompt attention will be provided. With 618 formations nationwide, the FRSC, according to the commercial Bobo Oyemi, is improving its data management system as a leading agency in road safety management on the African continent. Mr. President has a passion and has ensured all the international responsibilities on road safety is met. Hopefully before the end of this month, the FEC, Federal Executive Council, is supposed to approve the African Road Safety Treaty, which is supposed to be deposited before the next year's conference, the closeout conference of the UN Decade of Action for Road Safety. Inadequate funds to pursue both local and international safety goals, according to the committee members, require urgent legislative intervention. As we are talking now, some members of our families, they are on the road. So we owe it that duty. We need to be on the same page to ensure that the roads are safe for our people. And that is why we count it necessary. Despite the teaming responsibility of the Federal Road Safety Corps, the House Committee said its responsibility remains only one. It is a framework to ensuring safety on the Nigeria's 204,000 kilometer road network. From the National Assembly, Abdullah Haminu, NTA News. Now, guess what happened in Kano? Well, I'm going to tell you. Commercial activities were brought to a standstill in Kano as thousands of APC supporters lined up at the major streets of the city to welcome Governor Abdullahi Umar Ganduji, whose re-election was recently validated by the election petitions tribunal. Abdullahi Mustafa witnessed the arrival of the governor and sent in this report. In two weeks, Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji has been away on various official engagements in Abuja and outside the country. His arrival at the Malam Aminikano International Airport is the first time the people of the state are seeing him since the governorship election petition tribunal's ruling that validated his re-election. On ground to receive him are Kano APC leaders, members of the national and state assemblies, as well as heads of government agencies. Also along major roads are hundreds of people who line up to welcome and congratulate the governor. Due to large turnout and heavy vehicular traffic, the motorcade spent five hours on the road and could not arrive at the government house till nightfall. Governor Ganduji thanked the people of Kano for the warm reception and support, which he described as an encouragement to do more to the state. We lay emphasis to girl child education so that all our girls will be educated up to secondary school, that is the minimum. And we assure the people of Kano for peace and stability. Other parties tell what see the rousing welcome to the governor as an indication that the people of Kano are happy with APC's President Muhammad Buhari and Governor Abdullah Omar Ganduji. In Kano, Abdullah Mustafa, NTA News. And soon Nigeria will be leading in solar panel production, especially now that the science minister is in full support of the process. After all, the country is blessed with abundant sunlight. Once you get details of this, then stay with me. For the hundreds and hundreds of heavy prices, like a can of pepper, industrial sewing machine, grinding machine, and generator. Blow my own dumb better. My grinder will go win. Now here I go put up. Make that. Hey, make one. I no go recharge you now, Glo. I don't win the generator. And here, now myself. Oh, the more you recharge, the more your chance, the better. Start your day easier and happier with LG Inverter. Gain peace of mind with an efficient laundry cycle. Feel cooler air even at midday without any worries. Enjoy mealtime with food kept fresh all day long. The LG Inverter enriches your everyday life. 
Better inverter, LG inverter. Why keep mixing things when you can have them all in one? New Mr. Muscle All Purpose Cleaner. Have the cleaning power. So you can easily dance right through a variety of tough messes like spills and stains, grease and soap scum and get back to the things you love. New Mr. Muscle All Purpose Cleaner. Get your power in one. SC Johnson, a family company. What we are really cultivating here is a better future for all Nigerian women and it's not always easy. Panadol Extra relieves headache, backache, joint pain, toothache and menstrual pain. The pain is worth it. Hey you! And are you are to talk to? I sabi you now. It's in day your mind, Abi. The person with them go help us. Baba Torosa, Shangalo, Ogalekuva, Mr. Sabi. And you know if it carry last for this one. And spear into the top pole. We sabi say picking will crawl before in waka. So don't look, no help anybody. No dolly, no. So go for her. Go for football. Go for all Syria and La Liga marches live. Go for Go TV Max. NCA Abelkuta is 40. Come, let's celebrate 40 years of impressive TV broadcasting at the grassroots. On Thursday, 17th October 2019, there'll be a lecture titled Lens and Sound Television, a tool for social reorientation and good governance. Guest lecturer, Professor Uluyemisi Uluremi Obiladi, Professor of Education and Women's Studies, Obafemi Awolo University. Special guest of honor, His Excellency, Prince Dakwa Abiodun, Governor of Ogun State, Royal Father of the Day, His Royal Majesty, Oba Adedotunare Mubadebo, the Alake and Pramontrola of Egbaland, Chairman of the Occasion, Chief Olatunde Anyela Abudu, Mayego of Egbaland, Chief Host, Malam Yakubo Ibn Mohammed, Director General, NCA. Other activities lined up for the occasion include an array of awards to distinguished entities held to walk on Saturday, 12th October 2019. While Innovative Match comes up on Tuesday, 15th October 2019 at MKO Abiola Stadium. Come, celebrate for the years of impressive television at the grassroots with us and take NCA Abelko to the next level. Let's come together as we celebrate the uniqueness of our cultural diversity, showcase our creativity and ingenuity. It's the National Festival for Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, in the Asian city of Benin, Edo State, the heartbeat of the nation. Feed our royalty, our pride. Holding 19th through 26th October 2019. Highlights will include drama, children poetry performance, essay writing competition, crafts competition, indigenous cuisine, traditional wrestling, indigenous fabrics in royal apparel, cultural quiz competition, board games, and lots more. Oh yes, it's the National Festival of Arts and Culture, NAFEST 2019, Edo State, Nigeria. Holding 19th to 26th October 2019. We are Celebrating our heritage. Optimba Olusha Gurunshiwe, Director General, National Council for Arts and Culture, Anabusa. Thanks for staying with us on News Extra. And now let's join Aboladi Salami Live in Lagos for Business News. Aboladi, it's over to you. Thank you, Fatima, and welcome to the Business News segment. The 10.33 trillion naira budget estimate presented by President Muhammad Buhari to the joint session of the National Assembly has continued to generate reactions. Director General Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Muda Yusuf, says the key assumptions of the budget proposal is realizable with an improved revenue generation. The design of the 2020 budget estimate of 10.33 trillion naira. President Mohamed Buhari informed Nigerians is to further strengthen the nation's macroeconomic environment and to consolidate our fiscal policies of the government. With a capital expenditure of 2.14 trillion naira and recurrent allocated 4.88 trillion naira, while debt service got 2.45 trillion naira, economic experts of the view that although the country had a fragile growth, it is expected that the 2020 estimate will further boost the pace of economic growth. And we have seen a very clear commitment 
on both sides, you know, uh, to achieving that. That will help at least to reduce the level of uncertainty that we have around the fiscal operations of government and around the budgetary process. So one must, one must commend that. Uh, on the assumptions of the budget, I think the assumptions, the key parameters are generally realistic. Uh, they are modest enough, in my view. I, I think fundamentally, in terms of the philosophy behind the budget, I will say the government and indeed our economic planners uh, did very well to say budget of consolidation and continuity. Uh, if you look at the objective of the budget, I will also say the objective are fairly realistic and in consonance with our expectations. Meanwhile, on the expected gross domestic product growth rate of 2.93%, in 2020 estimates, they expressed optimism with a view to the economic policies initiated by the federal government to sustain growth. As part of efforts towards ensuring that Nigeria cut down on its over $2 billion annual expenditure on acquisition of hard and software solutions in the country, Central Bank Governor Gordon Mefiela says the bank is working with key players to create an ICT training where students will be given soft loans to enable them to obtain advanced training at the Center on Developing Cutting-Edge Technological Solutions around cybersecurity and cloud computing. 50,000 Nigerians are expected to benefit from this center, which will result in creating over 25,000 software engineers and 150,000 skilled and unskilled jobs. It could result in potential GDP gains of close to $2 billion while copying importation of IT solutions that can be produced in Nigeria. Sourcing Center for IT Services, where Nigeria is expected to earn $200 million annually. And now let's talk equities. Investors lost 102.71 billion naira as market sentiment remains negative. Here are details of midweek trading. Profit taken by investors has continued to keep trading activities in the Nigeria equities market in the red. The bearish outlook was sustained at the close of Wednesday's trading as the markets dipped by 0.79% to close the all-share index below the 29,000 psychological line. Volume of shares traded finished at 591 million, valued at 7.3 billion naira, which changed hands in 2,907 deals with a market capitalization of 12.9 trillion naira. MTN Nigeria topped on the gainers table, followed by Forte Oil and Access, while on the flip side, Nestle, Dangote Cement and Guinness declined in figures. On sectorial performance, NSC Banking and Oil and Gas sectors closed in the green line, appreciating by 0.39% and 0.10%, while NSC Consumer Goods Industrial and insurance declined in figure by 1.80%, 1.63%, and 0.77%. And that's a wrap on business. It's back to Fatima and Abuja for the continuation of the news. Good evening. Thank you so much, Habalade, for the business package. Now, an undergraduate of business administration from the University of Benin has emerged winner in the Techno Mobile Photography Competition. Lynn Leneke reports that the initiative is aimed at showcasing skills in photography. One of Africa's most preferred smartphone brand, Techno Mobile, has continued to demonstrate its leadership position in the telecom industry in Nigeria. The company is using its numerous products and services to make a difference. Hashtag Unlock Mission Camp targeted at youth is to discover the next generation of unlockers using photography to tell stories. We put this program together where we we'll have young people in a camp, no TV, no radio, nothing, all the think, eight, think about for four days. It's pictures, photography, perfection. You can see the deliveries from these young people. All these images you're seeing on the wall were taken with a smartphone. 24 mobile photography lovers were selected as potential candidates for the challenge. 
putting their expertise to test for four days, innovative and artistic photograph shoots with techno mobile phones were featured. Eight contestants made it to the finals in the competition, producing Festus as the winner with an all-expenses-paid trip to Europe. I brought my creativity level. Um, God was with me, actually. It's grace. Everything is all, it's all about grace. I, I don't think... I think there are other persons that are supposed to be here, but they are not here. I'm just here. I'm, I'm happy, actually. We have to grade them based on their performances, uh, right from composition to storytelling to colors to... Um, impact as well. Hashtag Unlock Camp Mission is in partnership with Africa as Foundation. Renowned photographer with National Geographic magazine, Christopher Michael Brown was the instructor at the camp. Uh, you know, the competition was pretty, was pretty tough. Uh, you know, for, for a lot of these youth, it's like a huge opportunity, really for anyone. Yeah, it's amazing what the brand has been doing every month with these, with these, these this is a really perfect marriage between creative impulse and the technology to do it. Techno mobile smartphone has become a veritable tool for job creation for Nigerian youth. In Lagos, Lynn Lenake, NTA News. And from Lagos now to Dubai, Jitex Technology Week is not only a hub to display tech innovations, it provides a marketplace for investors as well and Nigeria is leaving no stone unturned at the Africa Investment Forum to drive financial flows to the nation's fast-growing ICT sector and other key areas of the economy. Correspondent Naja Atutijani reports that Nigerian tech startup Chiniki has also won first place prize in the A1 category at the Jitex Future Awards. In addition to providing a platform for innovators to showcase their talents, Jatex also provides investment opportunities and Nigeria is asserting the nation's presence on both fronts at the Africa Investment Forum here at Jitex 2019 with NITDA taking the lead and the Ministry of Communications providing technical support. Any potential investor who fails to invest in Nigeria will definitely regret sooner or later. Look at our contribution to GDP. The contribution of ICT to GDP is 13.86%. About 60% of Nigerians are youth. Youth means they are millennial and generation Z. We can harness this massive human resource and turn it into a massive um, industry. Technology uh, is, is the one tool we could really leverage to enable that future of uh, peace, abundance and prosperity. Industry players say such thinking is necessary for ensuring capital flows into critical sectors of Africa's economy, especially for indigenous startups like Medic 247 and Chiniki, which won the first place prize of 10,000 US dollars at Jitex Future Award in the AI category. Previous forums have seen the investment of upwards of 60 million US dollars from Chinese investors flowing into Africa. Industry players say investment is necessary for more of such wins. Naja Atutijani, NCA News. I say congratulations to us for Chiniki. For everyone in Nigeria today, be it for the purpose of domestic use, for micro and small enterprises, for manufacturing or for industrialization, access to efficient electricity remains a fundamental issue. Now, as part of efforts to boost the power generation capacity of the country, the National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NASENI, is soliciting synergy with the private sector to fully exploit the solar energy potential available in Nigeria. This technological leap by the agency is getting support of the Ministry of Science and Technology to enable it to expand its solar power plant from 7.5 megawatts to 50 megawatts capacity. Justin Bemoni reports. Nigeria's growing population calls for an ever-increasing need for power supply to boost socio-economic development, for which the available power generation seems inadequate to meet the quest for industrial growth. This 
where experts in the country call for the exploration of power mix. Basically, renewable energy being an option for consideration. The National Agency for Science and Engineering Infrastructure, NACENI, in line with its mandate, has been into the production of solar panels from its solar power plant in Karshi, Abuja. The agency is now considering a 100% production of solar cells from locally sourced raw materials. And the raw materials are available, only the equipment to do it that is requiring funding. Uh, once that can be done, Nigeria can own this aspect of energy delivery in the world. The entire world is going solar. In the meantime, the non academic Start Union of Educational and Associated Institutions of Naseni had promised to cooperate with the management of the agency for it to achieve the target of 100% production of solar panels. Now this was at an interactive meeting between management and the union of the agency. I hope you can give in your best to the institution. The union union is not to be a dagger drum with management all the time. Arriving at an amicable solution after necessary George doing is better. We encourage all of us and them to sacrifice what cannot be possible for the benefit of the country. Just them in NTNs. It is a common alternative to cooking in many homes today. Call it the cheapest clean energy source, you won't be wrong. It is called liquefied petroleum gas, LPG. Very good and convenient, but dangerous if mishandled. It has in recent times become a threat to life and this is worrisome. Mohamed Adebowale in this report takes a look at the safer way of handling LPG cylinders to curb accidents as well as reduce death rate resulting from improper use. As a large developing country has a considerably high energy requirements for cooking and energy choices include kerosene, electricity, charcoal and of course liquefied petroleum gas known as LPG with the country's current gas reserves on the rise with total estimation of 202 trillion cubic feet coupled with the recent move by the federal government to ensure that 13.8 million households adopt LPG for their cooking in the next five years. About 85% of Nigerians now rely solely on LPG as an alternative source of energy, most especially for cooking. Despite being the cheapest, clean, and easiest energy source, recent findings have shown that about 1.3 million Nigerians lost their lives to liquefied petroleum gas related issues as a result of improper management of its cylinder and burner. Recently, a video went viral on social media platforms where two persons narrowly escaped one of such kitchen gas explosions. We've observed over time that some people, the way and manner they use the LPG is not in compliance with what we have stipulated. So, we feel it's good to have awareness, it's good to sensitize the public. Apart from improper handling of LPG, another challenge identified is that of imported cylinders failing to meet safety requirements. In case of leakage, what we advise is if the person can, it should of the valve. If the person has a fire extinguisher, you should try to use, if he knows or she knows how to use fire extinguisher, he or she should try to use it, or what is known as fire blanket. And if the individual doesn't know how to make use of this gadget I've mentioned, it's better they quickly call the fire service or they inform GPR and we know what to do. The end user should check the hose, they should check their valve, they should check the cylinder, they should check the burner. They should not just be after, they want to cook, they just light. Yes, to be cautious about their cylinders. First, some people they don't notice if there's leak in their cylinder. That's why you look at those people that are using like the camping one, we call it all the 6 kg camping one. There's need for them to make sure that their head is already tight. Some of them, they will be carrying the cylinder from the top. Meanwhile, you have to carry it from the body. So we advise people to make sure that the, the, the burner is already tight. 
and always observe because the gas used to give sound. For adequate safety of the end users, LPG must be stored in adequate location. With regards to relevant codes of practice, people too must be sensitized to be more safety conscious while handling LPG to avoid unnecessary loss of lives. In Abekuta, Mohammed Adebowa, NT News. Thank you, Mohammed, for that insightful report. Now, there is a saying that the customer is a king and always right. It is to buttress uh, on this and ensure that Nigerians get value for services being rendered, especially by public agencies, that Servicom is marking the 2019 Customer Service Week with Funfair. Correspondent Olusei Adiabo joined the roadshow to part of um, in parts of Abuja where the public was enlightened on their rights to be served right at all times. DJ No Doubt is making the scenario entertaining. However, the focus is on educating the general public on the ultimate mission of Savicom. 23-year-old Daniel Godwin is into selling of dogs, though not aware of what Savicom is. He got attracted to the music. And after a while, he knows what the campaign train is driving at. Although me, I don't know before, but actually now that I, lift, I read the leaflets given to me, so I know what is going on. Now it's Savicom Week. The intention of officials of Savicom head office and its members from some ministries, departments and agencies in Abuja is to use this roadshow to advocate for excellence in public service and improving customer satisfaction. The national coordinator, Savicom office, Inena Kajamali, also met with top management staff of the Nigerian Television Authority at its headquarters and permanent secretary, General Services, at the office of the Secretary of the Government of the Federation, where she received assurance of the continued support and readiness on effective service delivery. Servicom has been in persistent partnership with NTA. We've provided them the necessary work to do most of what they've been doing. It is our obligation to deliver quality service to all Nigerians. The Servicom Office National Coordinator and some participants speak on the theme of the week, the magic of service and the expectations going forward. When you give quality service, excellent service to a customer, it has magical effects. Most people don't know what their rights are. The Customer Service Week is celebrated across the world in October of every year. And in Nigeria, it is also used to appreciate efforts of service providers. In Abuja, Ulushaye Adiago, NTA News. I would say public work, Savikam. Remember the Kaduna Rehabilitation Center in Kaduna, where some inmates were chained? The state has moved to the courts where some of the operators have been arraigned. Details after the break. Thank you. Thank you. Please, did you hear that? Uh, of course I did. That is village and master too. Okay. So, Auntie Amen was not gossiping. Village and master is celebrating 50 years. 50? Already? Wait, oh, you mean people have been watching village and master since 1968? I care how time flies. Tired, but not tired. And after 50 years now. So because of that, we won't get big party. New date, now 28th to 28th, October 2019. And me, I'm going to invite you now. My belly just is sweet. Because I don't say all those people, they drink my party. Then go, come, come drink it to go again. And me, radio and jam, they call you now. They will not forget it. of stars from the north, south, east to the west, and central Africa, and also those that are domiciled beyond the shores of Africa, under one roof.
These days, people get better news and information from more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored, and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection, and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Welcome back. The Nigeria Air Force, in its commitment to shaping the capacity and skills of its officers and men, organized a special forces training for 200 airmen at the Air Force Base Bochi. Adamu Haruna Adams takes up the report from here. Effective fight against emerging security threats and insurgency calls for continuous development of security strategies, training and retraining of personnel, as well as acquisition of modern weaponry, among others. For the Nigerian Air Force, these have been at the core of security architecture under the leadership of the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar. 200 airmen from the base undergo the training on shooting skills, on armed combat, navigation, field tactics, communications, endurance, and swimming, among others. Air Officer Commanding Ground Training Command of the Nigerian Air Force, Air Vice Marshal Idi Amin, says robust counterforce to adequately respond to any contingency is vital in Nigeria's contemporary security environment, which he adds is characterized by insurgency and other vices. Special Forces capabilities hold great importance to military operations worldwide. This is because they are highly trained and motivated forces who possess an array of skills and are capable of operating in all types of terrain. The Special Forces Corps 5 2019, which is the first of its kind, the Air Force Base Bochi is aimed at developing the capacity of the personnel to fight under all kinds of circumstances. The reiterated commitment of the Nigerian Air Force to using its available resources for welfare and training of its personnel. In Bochi, Adam Haruna Adams, NTA News. Our Nigeria is said to be grappling with a series of high-profile crimes that constitute major threats to national security. These include banditry, kidnapping, armed robbery, cattle rustling, cybercrime, as well as small and light arms proliferation. Worried by these threats, the Minister of Police Affairs, Mohamed Mikari Dingyari, is seeking ways to reposition the police force for service delivery. Francis Form reports that this led to the minister's visit to the force headquarters. The minister arrived in his headed house to the Watergard parade with the Inspector General of Police and his management team on ground to receive him. Thereafter, he was ushered into the conference room of the Inspector General of Police for discussions. Yes, you are he notes with dismay the poor state of the barracks, absence of the state-of-the-art equipment, and poor welfare packages, as well as the wrath in the police training schools across the country. A situation, he says, the government is keen to address so as to take the police to the next level. The ministry under my watch will work tirelessly to ensure that we get the funding the police needs and we will also inject new ideas into policing of our nation. The IGP, Mohamed Damu, did not mince words. He expresses his desire to mitigate the threats of insecurity confronting the country despite the inadequacies of manpower, logistics, and other operational facilities. In order to effectively tackle the identified challenges, my vision is to evolve a police force that is rule of law guided, active, operational, that will engage cutting-edge technology in all companies 
maintenance of police and functions. This led to a guided tour of facilities for the minister to see for himself and be better prepared for the tax ahead. In Abuja, Francis from NTA News. Six teachers of the Illegal Rehabilitation Center in Rugasa, Kaduna, where 300 persons, including children, were rescued in chains, have been remanded in convicts' correctional center. Abdullahi Mohammed reports that the teachers were arraigned before a Kaduna magistrate court. These images cannot go for the humane process of rehabilitation of addicts or social deviants. In fact, the Nigerian police described it as criminal conspiracy, wrongful confinement, cruelty, and unnatural act. It is on this premise that the police approached the magistrate court, praying it to punish six teachers alleged to have been involved in the act. Police prosecutor Hassan Malam told the chief magistrate, Judge Musa Lol Muhammad, that investigation is still ongoing into the matter, urging the court to remand the six teachers in a correctional center. This didn't go down well with the counsel to the defendant, citing the court's lack of jurisdiction to handle the matter. The judge agreed with the counsel to the defendant that the court lacks the jurisdiction to try the defendant. He therefore remanded the six accused in correctional facility until the case is called for hearing on the 29th of this month. When hearing resumes on the matter by the 29th of this month, we will know whether the case will continue to be handled by the chief magistrate court here or it will be transferred to a high court. In Kaduna, Abdullah Mohammed, NTN News. We'll be waiting for that, Abdullah Mohammed. Now, according to a World Health Organization report, suicide is the second leading cause of death globally, as different individuals and organizations, including government, is championing the prevention of suicide, especially in Nigeria. A young Nigerian singer has joined the crusade. Adeola Omokive tells us more. has shown that out of the many who contemplate suicide yearly, 800,000 of them actually succeed in taking their lives. This translates to one person dying every 40 seconds by suicide. Dr. G. Okeo Dumaki, who spoke to this ugly trend, commended the initiative of this young Nigerian, Oziomachuku Mojeku, also known as OZB, for his ability to realize the harm it causes at his tender age and his advocacy to stop the menace. Stop Suicide Africa. This is not a good project. This is a project that everyone must support. The young lad received support from the only of Ife who has represented other traditional rulers, a number of state governments, captains of industry, and members of the creative industry. Stop Suicide Africa! Ife only always like youth development. Because he knows that those are the people that will take over after we might have left. This is a young man that you want to also say to the whole world to watch the space because he's going to do a lot of things. With almost 300 awards in Skitty, OZB, with the help of his mother, has maintained an excellent result even with all his activities. I'm happy people is good and it's great and you don't know when God might just do something for you. I'm not like I'm saying I'm doing for like the money or the fame or anything. I'm just doing you do it for my own heart. The event also featured the launch of his first album, Journey of My Life, with 13 tracks. In Lagos, Adeola Omokive, NCA News. You can see we are slowly winding down this interesting package and some sports news and a glimpse of what tomorrow's weather holds. That's for you to know if you will be leaving your house with an umbrella or not. Just hold on for a moment. They are there at the crack of dawn. They are there busy preparing while we rise for our day. They are there silently, guarding, waiting, listening and watching. They are there ready in the sky above and the waters below. In the blistering heat of the day, in the dead of night, willing, indefatigable, determined in the defense of the sovereignty of our country. They are our first line of defense and our last. They who have paid the ultimate price in defending us. 
They are fathers and uncles. They are mothers and sisters and girlfriends and boyfriends. They are brothers and cousins and best friends and neighbors. They are classmates, colleagues and citizens of this nation. They are our defenders and deserve our respect, our prayers, our thoughts. Nigeria, please support our armed forces. Six thousand four hundred seconds in a day, and just one like this. The golden moment when it all comes together. The people. The style. The flavor. I'll drink to that. New Guinness Gold Beer. Savor the flavor. Good to have you back. The 17th IAF World Championships ended Sunday in Doha, Qatar, with Team Nigeria placing 32nd out of 200 countries that competed. IODG Makinde reviews the country's performance ahead of Tokyo 2020 Olympics. We're going to ask the very difficult questions. Here we are again as a nation with constant thirst for glory in sports tournaments. The performance of Team Nigeria at the 2019 World Championships in Doha has left all sport tastes in our mouth, considering the high expectations which arounded the build-up. 25 athletes and 6 coaches left the country with a target of ending the medal drought since Moscow 2013. However, the delisting and relisting of some athletes, which prompted the recall of AFN Technical Director Sunday Adeleye from Doha by Sports Minister Sunday Dari, the pressure of high expectations on the shoulders of these athletes and the blame game as well as buck passing are some signposts of the present situation. Most of the time we don't get to go to training camps. We only see where we come to the competition venue. And we just have really less days to actually perfect this um, hand up. You know, it should be a more structured um, program for us. Worried by the inability to transform 2019 African Games successes in track and field to the World Championships, issues of indiscipline and refusal to compete resurfaced at the championships. So majorly I can confirm to you there's an issue of indiscipline that would have to be removed. We should try to build a team with a lot of discipline and cohesion. We should start early in terms of preparations. We should tighten up our administrative processes in terms of the entries, the timing. For Ese Rume, who defied the medical verdict to compete and ended up winning bronze medal with a leap of 6.91 meters in women's long jump, the reception sums it up when the price of success is fully paid. <laughs> SA was told she could never jump again. In fact, that came from uh, her doctor who says she doesn't have any possibility of jumping. But this is her life. She put in all the effort and she felt this is her life and her future. And she's proved everyone wrong. Now we're ready for Tokyo. Now we've got something to work off. But also it's time for us to say goodbye to certain people. Before Tokyo 2020 Olympics, the be more windows of opportunities to brighten Nigeria's chances in sport events next year and put athletes in better positions for podium finishes. In Abuja, I'm Ayodeji, Makinde NTA Sports. And contrary to recent speculations that the forthcoming international friendly between Nigeria's Super Eagles and Brazil on Sunday has been cancelled. The Nigeria Football Federation Wednesday in Abuja denied it, insisting that the match will go ahead as planned. General Secretary of the Federation, Sanusi Mohammed, in an interview with correspondent Ayo Dijimakinde, says players, coaches and backroom staff started arriving in Singapore on Wednesday morning. He stated that apart from some players who have been forced to withdraw due to injury, Technical advisor Gennett Raw still has a depth squad to select from when they take on the five time world champions at the National Stadium in Singapore. Thank you authoritatively that uh, the match has not been cancelled. Uh, as I'm talking to you, the players have already arrived in Singapore. 
together with the coach and uh, the other officials that are living from Nigeria, they have already collected their visa and they are traveling tonight. Who could have been responsible for these widespread speculations of um, that the match would not hold? Well, it's, it's just uh, people and in, uninformed people that are interested in just creating issue out of no issue. Uh, otherwise, there is no issue at all, and nobody has said the match has been cancelled. And there is no issue as far as the visa for the players are concerned. The people that are living here, as I said, they have collected their visa and they are living tonight. I don't know what informed of uh, uh, people of uh, creating this kind of uh, uh, false information, feeding people with false information. The friendly match is the first since both countries played during the inauguration of the Abuja National Stadium in 2003 as Brazil won 3-0. And now to a sad one, death has a call of Mrs. Christina Adukedada of Igbara Uke, Ondo State. She passed away on 31st August at the age of 84 after a brief illness an accomplished technocrat mrs christiana dada had a career spanning over three decades after which she retired at the nigerian reinsurance plc at retirement she was an instructor at the nigerian insurance training institute she is survived by a sister mrs victoria coyote and a brother professor ayo babalola children and men grandchildren, among whom are Mrs. Mojishola Edun, Mr. Femi Dada and Mrs. Fumilayo Kuka, wife of the Executive Director Program NTA, Mr. Wole Kuka. Burial arrangements will be announced later by the family. And now let's take a look at the weather picture for Thursday. And that's it on a news extra for tonight. Thank you so much for watching. I am Fatima Umaruba. Enjoy the rest of your night.